Okay, so, so, so you're gonna have to use your imagination. So, 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 um, so, um, so, um, so, 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 basically, and, so, 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 um, so this is a birth chart. Welcome to Junobi, my name is Becca, and I'm an Aries Sun Scorpio Rising Gemini Moon. Today we're talking about the infamous Saturn return. I think that this is one of those things in astrology that a lot of people have heard about, but maybe not everybody knows exactly what it is. So that's why I'm here today. We're gonna talk a little bit about Saturn on its own, just not returning, nothing about the transits. We'll go through them by element like we did in the last video, and then we'll get a little bit more into depth about the Saturn return. I'll leave a little timestamp down below if you just wanna know about the Saturn return so you don't have to watch all of the other stuff that I'm going to talk about, but I hope you will. I hope you'll join us. I'm happy to have you. Thanks for coming. We have a lot to go over, so let's get started. Saturn takes roughly 29 and a half years to revolve around the sun. Their glyph looks like this, and while it is the planet of confinement and restriction, it's also the planet of power and responsibility. Saturn through the elements will tell you where you're inhibited in life and the sort of blocks that you need to get out of the way in order to achieve your goals. So talking about fire signs for a second, we know them to be very energetic and enthusiastic, but then Saturn comes in and tells them to sort of harness that energy and create with more regularity. It also encourages them to freely express themselves, but also do it responsibly. What we already know about earth signs is that they are already in tuned with the physical world and they also have amazing work ethics. But then Saturn steps in and tells them to establish a more stable work ethic, not only in their job, but in their home life as well. And it also encourages them to find ways to master the material world rather than just being a part of it. What we already know about air signs is their deep thoughts as well as their need for social responsibility. Saturn likes to step in and tell them that they need to discipline their thoughts and try to stay away from the negative. It also encourages those with this placement to communicate more clearly and be involved in these social responsibilities with more sincerity while still being able to step back and look at it objectively. What we already know about water signs is their emotional capacity and their intense sensitivity. Saturn likes to step in and tell them to try and discipline that behavior, harness their sensitivity, and try to step away from that immediate emotional response. It also encourages people with this placement to accept themselves first. Okay, now that we know a little bit about what Saturn is and what Saturn does, we can start talking about the Saturn return. What I have here is a little chart that I made. I know it's very impressive. I'm sure you can tell I put a lot of work into this. What I did was I just labeled one, six, seven, and 12 so that you can tell the orientation of the chart, but I didn't have enough room at the bottom to do all of the numbers, so you're gonna have to use your imagination. But as we know, this is always the first house and we always move this way. We always go counterclockwise around the birth chart. So the first important thing to mention when talking about the Saturn return is that Saturn's orbit takes 29 and a half years to revolve around the sun, but when your Saturn return starts is actually a couple years prior to that. Your Saturn will continue to be in return for about two years, depending on Saturn's orbit at that time. So the first important thing to look at when talking about someone's Saturn return is what sect their birth chart is in. So. Looking at the ascendant line, which is right here, and the descendant line, which would be over here, because the ascendant is the first, the descendant is the seventh, because they are opposite each other. Figuring out what sect a person's chart is in is basically just seeing if they were born during the day or during the night. You could probably figure this out by just knowing what time that person was born, but it's also kind of cool to be able to do it this way, just in case you don't know the exact time that person was born, but you have their chart, just not the time. So, look at the person's sun, where their sun is. That glyph looks like this. I'll put it down here, because I think the little video is gonna be up there. So I'm getting a little crowded over here, but we're working with it. We'll use this for the sun. It's a little citrine. Um, I think it's really nice and it has like a little nipple on it. 
let's say just for example purposes, their sun would be in the second house. That would mean that their sect is a nighttime chart. So basically, if a person's sun is anywhere on the lower half of the chart, they are a nighttime sect. If a person's sun is anywhere on the upper part of the chart, they're a daytime sect. This is going to affect potential readings of the Saturn return. So if your chart is a daytime chart, your Saturn return is going to exhibit a lot of constructive qualities like hard work and success and responsibility. So I'll put a little smiley face. And if you have a nighttime chart, your Saturn return is going to exhibit some loss and suffering. So how to find out when your Saturn is returning? Everybody take the birth charts out. We're going to, just for this example, say that our Saturn is in the first house and we'll say that it is in Aries. It's a little Aries glyph for you. So this is a birth chart. This is the chart that somebody is born with. And in this example, their Saturn is in the first house in Aries. We'll say it's in 15 degrees of Aries. So we'll do a little cool. So in this particular example, Saturn is in Aries in 15 degrees. Now is when we start talking about the transits. There's a lot of different apps and websites to be able to find some different transit charts. Um, I'll leave an app down below that I usually use. It's honestly not my favorite, but it gets the job done because it doesn't show exact angles, but it does have the degrees involved in it, which is kind of what's important when talking about the Saturn return or any sort of conjunction or aspect in any way. So it does the job. I'll leave it in the description down below. Now we look at the transit chart and we try to find where Aries is in the transit chart. So maybe for this example, Aries is actually gonna be over here. Okay, it's gonna be in the fifth house. That's just how the transits are working out. So we have to wait until Saturn is in Aries and we look for it to be within 11 degrees. That's going to be the start of the return. So in this case, we'll say that Saturn is in four degrees Aries. Nailed it. So this would officially be the start of your Saturn return. It'll probably happen when you're around 27. That's probably when it's gonna start creeping up on you a bit. So for this example, Saturn right now is in four degrees of Aries and our Saturn return is starting. How exciting. We know that in our natal chart that Saturn is in 15 degrees of Aries, which means that our Saturn return is going to last from four degrees to 26 degrees. Can you see that? Yeah, it's close enough. <laughs> so this is how long your return takes. It usually takes around two years, maybe two and a half years to go back to being direct. So as soon as our little Saturn is in 27 degrees, Aries, you're free! <laughs> and hopefully you learn something along the way. So usually for this, you would have two separate charts to look at, um, but I only have one chalkboard, so we have to do it this way. <laughs> Whether you have a daytime chart or a nighttime chart, the Saturn return is going to teach you a lot about yourself and it depends heavily on what house your natal Saturn is in. So we know that in this example, our natal Saturn is in the first house, the house of outer appearance and new beginnings. So in this example, we can probably assume that once this person's Saturn returns, they are going to have some issues with their body and also probably starting some new things that maybe scare them a little bit. But once their Saturn goes back to being direct, they're going to realize a lot about themselves and they're going to grow so much from these challenges. Most people will live through two or three Saturn returns, so it's really important to understand them and kind of get a feel for how they're going to affect you. It's always going to pertain to whatever house your Saturn is in. So the Saturn return can definitely be a little bit scary, but it's always important to rise to the occasion when these things happen and sort of fight back at these challenges that are going to be presented to you no matter what. It's going to happen to all of us. Um, the people with the daytime charts might have a bit of an easier time. I'm a nighttime baby, so... But I hope you guys really learned something from this and this hopefully demystified some of the implications of the Saturn return. I know there have been a few YouTubers that have talked about it and have talked about their experience with their Saturn return. Um, so I hope that this inspires you guys to sort of live up to the occasion of the Saturn return and fight back because you're strong enough. 
Next week, I'm going to tell you guys about all the retrograde planets. Um, I know I mentioned I was going to talk about the outer planets, but it's really not necessary. We all have the same placement. You're not going to notice anything different in your life. So, but I will talk about the outer planets when I talk about the retrogrades, and I'll go into depth about those as well. I hope you guys learned something from this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all the support. If you have a Saturn in your natal chart, hit that like button. If you've lived through your Saturn return, leave me a little comment down below. I'm not there yet. I'm very nervous about it. I'm 24 for anybody who was wondering. So it's coming up, but not quite yet. My Saturn, I, you don't care about my chart. Do you care about my chart? Let me know in the comments if you care about my chart. Maybe I'll do a little in-depth reading of my own chart so you guys can learn a little bit more about me. Thanks so much for watching. That's it for today's video. I post every Tuesday and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. We know them to be very spontaneous and energetic. Energetic? Ew. <laughs> know them to be very spontaneous and energetic. I keep saying etergetic. That's disgusting. What we already know about air signs is their deep thinking capabilities. This is going- ooh, no! <sighs> so, once Saturn is in math 4 degrees,